Hi, boys. Welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up, play, and review the game Dream Home. Now, this is a game that I saw on the box cover, and I thought, all right, okay, what's all this about? Um, the art, uh, maybe the particular art on the front cover didn't really appeal to me, um, but I've since played it, and I'm here to tell you all about it. So you're going to take a board each. I'm just going to use a single board just to show you for demonstration purposes. And you're also going to take a central board, which looks something like this. As you can see, there's nothing other than, you know, fake timber on the back. So you have this in play and that's going to go off to the side and you're going to take your dream home off and place it off to the side as well. Okay, so in this game you're looking to get the most victory points and there are a few ways in which you can try and score points. For example, you can have a bathroom, a bedroom and a kitchen or maybe having a bathroom on two different floors. You're going to take these decks of cards and you're going to shuffle them up and you can also try and get decor. You can try and get cat houses, for example, or you can try and get a nice roof. If you want to get a roof, a nice roof, in fact, what you want to be doing is getting four pieces of roof tiles of the same colour. That gives you the most points, that will give you eight points, five points for having four of the same type, and three for completing it, which is four pieces of roof. If you happen to have pieces of roof which don't actually equal that amount, then you're just going to get three points. You're going to take one of these each. That is just reminding you everything that I just talked to you about. So leave that in play. These go back in the box. And then if you happen to get any of those decor pieces I mentioned about, then you can take these and place them onto your board, such as a tree house. We have a little um, whirlpool thing, a hot tub thing. We have a nice little thing down here. We have a storage shelving unit, some pictures, a bird house, and an ice cream kind of factory design thing. Aside from that, you won't need this presently, but what you'll be using is a score pad, which is just a single sided score pad like this, and you can fill it in to get your scores. So leave that out of shot for the time being. Whoever wants to start, the youngest player, is going to take a first player marker, and it's going to have it down here. You're then going to lay out five cards on the bottom row, and the start of the game, the first player is going to be removing one of these columns. Now, I can't recall off the top of my head, but there have been some other games that I've played whereby you are taking everything from one column. Uh, please let me know in the comments and any other things throughout any of this, uh, just let me know and please try and try remind me what that game is or what games. I know I've played it on Board Game Arena as well. And again, if you want to, please also check out the description as well as hitting the thumbs up, the subscribe button and of course the notification bell if you haven't done so already. Okay, so the first player is after these 12 rounds have been played, you'll be scoring up. So in your first of the 12 rounds, say I'm the starting player, I'm going to be picking one of these things. I can take the study, in which case all I'm going to be doing is that allows me to take the first player and stay as first player, or I can take something else. But first and foremost, I'm going to discard a row. You can't discard this row. That does show you two cards, but yeah, ignore that. I need to have a discard. So I'm going to discard the living room. Now, in this case, if you have one on its own, it's worth one point. If you have two adjacent, not vertically, but adjacent like this, be worth four points at the end of the game and nine points if you've got three next to each other. Some people managed that in the last game. So I'll discard that and I am going to take the bathroom and place it here and a roof tile and place it for the end of the game. Now you might want to build a garage because if you build a garage it allows you to build a cross otherwise you can't go up. So someone else takes this, someone else takes this and of course uh, this card will get discarded and no one else happened to change the first player so it's me again. And then we go through it again. So we're going to draw out five more cards. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to do five of these decor cards again. One, two, three, four, five. Now I took that roof tile. You can't look at it again until the end of the game. I can't remember what it is now. Maybe it was lavender. So again, I'm probably going to take this. I'll probably discard something. I'm going to discard, let's say, uh, this one, the kitchen, because if they get two of them, then it's worth six points, which is pretty efficient. So this is worth zero points at the end of the game, unless I have another garage next to it, which makes it worth four points. But now I can build on top of it. And I've got an orange roof tile, so two different things. Someone else goes, and it's going to continue like this. At the end of the game, as I mentioned, you're going to score based on wherever you have points. So I might have three living rooms. So if these are filled in, uh, this is all going to be completely filled at the end of the game, these 10 spaces, and it allows you to know the game is finished. Uh, you have the living room, which means you can be scoring up to, say, nine points here. A bathroom, a single point here. I have a bathroom up here, remember that's worth three points. A bathroom, a kitchen, as we saw here, and a bedroom, if I happen to have a bedroom, then that will score me an additional three points. And uh, that's how it progresses. I'm now going to just kind of 
fold across to hide other people's scores and show you as I did before. So last time I happened to get 18 points for my rooms, zero for decor, uh, six for functionality and four for roof tile points for a total score of 28 points. Well, this is a three player game. I'd like to play the other player counts and see how it differs. There's a lot of intensity as you're playing because you're keeping an eye on what helps you and what can you prevent other players from taking to ensure they don't get these kind of pattern matching combinations. The artwork is very nice. In fact, uh, as you can see, these kitchens look pretty cool. But equally, this isn't just the only set of kitchen art. You can get lots of other ones as well, which makes it, you know, uh, kind of increases its um, appeal and value for me. I feel it's better knowing that such a thing exists in a game. Equally, I think the art on here is lovely. It's nice to see like this rake down here. You've got the stained glass window, this cat looking at a bird. There's a fountain. It's nice to know these, these are tile pieces, which are very nice as well. Uh, this is a nice board. And something I haven't mentioned is if for whatever reason you cannot play a card, what you can do is place this. So imagine you hadn't built a garage, then that can, or any kind of basement tile, it basically has this kind of look to it, this darker edge then what you're going to be doing is you can build a deck or card instead. So it's something else to be aware of. Um, I like the different ways you can score. I think you can't really necessarily know how you're going to win. You're trying to keep an eye out on maybe completing your roof tiles. So right now it's worth nothing. I've had four and there are plenty of roof tiles. You are likely to get at least four of these cards. Um, I wasn't completely familiar with the fact you can only score roof tiles once, but then yes, of course, in this instance, you could be scoring quite a few points. And uh, of course, maybe choosing not to go for roof tile. There's some other cards, these helper cards. So maybe you can uh, change things around. Maybe you can do something different. So a piano, if you have a living room card, you're gonna score three points. So some of these you don't want early on. Uh, you place a shelving token on a basement card. So again, you need to make sure that you've got a basement card. Before you take uh, cards, discard the card, switch two rooms on the game board. The drill, before you take cards, you can switch two rooms as well and, and such like. So there's quite a different bits of variety going on there. Again, any questions about this game, please let me know. There are more games coming again, and uh, hope you found that of interest. Again, thanks very much for watching, and all the best. Bye for now.